Gathering information is something that militaries across the world have done for centuries, whether it be communications between people or electronic signals not directly used for communications. Before the invention of the radio, militaries would get scouts as close as they could to what they were looking to gather information on. These scouts would gather information with their eyes and sometimes ears and send a runner back and forth with the acquired information. This would be an example of an observation post. However, due to a rapidly changing world and the increased brutalities of warfare, a listening post became an ever-essential piece of gathering information. A listening post is gathering information with your ears instead of just what you see. A listening post and observation post in the modern world are the same thing. An example of this is World War I. They would extend the trenches forward into no man's land to try to hear what was going on in the enemy trenches. In World War II, the radio became a commonplace for transmitting signals over long distance. Therefore, signals intelligence was born. Militaries wanted to know what their enemy was up to, who was saying what, when, and where they were. Listening and observation posts have never had as much value as they do in the world today, not just for militaries, but also for civilians. Why would someone want to set up a listening or observation post? It might be in response to a local event. There could be emergency services across the street, and you might want to know why they're there. Or it could be due to a large civil disturbance that is occurring in or around your town. Knowing what is going on in real time puts you ahead of 99% of other people. Let's not wait to hear about it on the news, because by then, everyone else knows about it too. The most common way of gathering information today in real time, besides looking out your window if the event is close by, is via a scanner or radio. Information can be gained on the following groups by using either tool. Emergency services, railroads, industrial companies, hospitals, and state or federal governments. The information is out there if you know where to go and what to look for. The information obtained by listening to the radio spectrum is real-time, non-biased, and fact-based. There is no one telling you what you're hearing but you. While scanners might not be as popular as they once were, they are good at being a dedicated device with which to listen to at the state or local level. Modern scanners have most if not all of what you want to listen to already programmed in, while a radio has to be completely programmed. And there are some other differences worth noting. This is why you should look up what you want to listen to first, and then buy a piece of equipment that fits your needs, as not all radios or scanners can do what other radios or scanners can. Do you want to listen to digital modes? What part of the frequency spectrum do you want to listen to? Who or what do you want to listen to? I found radios to be far superior to handheld scanners in almost all means. But that doesn't mean everyone should go out and get a radio. Experiment. Try out different equipment and find what works best for you. The big reason as to why radios are better than scanners is due to the quality of components and or lack of shielding that is present in scanners. An analog transmission that comes in crystal clear on the handheld radio will fluctuate in and out on the handheld scanner. I've even bought a special Remtronics antenna for my scanner, but that didn't make a difference, which means that it is the receiver or other internals that can't do any better. On the other hand, for receiving a 7800 megahertz P25 digital trunk system, there is nothing more cost effective than a scanner. Next up, battery life. In many handheld radios, the battery life is exponentially better than a handheld scanner. When programming or, or using a radio to scan, it isn't illegal to program in frequencies you don't have a license for. It is only illegal to transmit. In my radios, I've programmed my local town in places I normally go, and then when I leave those areas, I make sure to bring my scanner with me. Anything is better than nothing, especially in unfamiliar surroundings. When we want to listen to what is going on further away than at the state or local level, we will need a long or shortwave receiver. These have special filtering that allow for better reception unlike traditional scanners in the lower frequencies. Or you could use your HF radio. On the lower frequencies you can listen to news from overseas across the country all without using any If you want to monitor what aircraft are overhead, you can get an automatic dependent surveillance broadcast ADS-B capable receiver. If anyone has ever used Flight Radar 24 before, that is how they get their information. All aircraft must use this module to transmit their GPS location, altitude, 
ground speed, identification, and other information. This is so air traffic controllers know where all aircraft are at all times, and so pilots also have situational awareness. Military planes flying domestically most of the time also have these modules turned on as to not cause any other problems with planes and or flight paths. A newer and more cost-effective way of listening to the airwaves comes from a software-defined radio, or SDR. There are a few out there right now from AirSpy, RTL, and many others. SDRs have changed the way people listen and gather information. These are little devices that plug into a USB port and have an antenna port on them. For $40, you can monitor digital and analog traffic across the spectrum along with many other capabilities. You can see the whole spectrum at any time via a waterfall display on a monitor. Since SDRs plug into a USB port, the sky is the limit. You can even receive pages if you wanted to from local public safety and hospitals, or you can download photos from the space weather satellites to see what the weather looks like in or around your area in case the TV or internet was to go down. I've also found they are as good or if not better than the top unit in SDS line for analog and digital receiver um, scanners at a fraction of the cost. The only downside is that you need to use a computer, which may not be convenient as opposed to a handheld scanner. However, you can see the spectrum instead of just listening to it. This helps you to see other traffic that you may not have been aware of if you couldn't see it. It gives the user much more information than a simple scanner or radio would. One program I used with my SDR to receive P25, DMR, and NXDN digital modes is called DSD+. DSD+, is a computer interface which is specially formulated to receive and monitor those digital modes. I can see the spectrum at or around my frequency, see who is talking and when, and basic cryptographic information. I use it to monitor encrypted P25 traffic of my local PD. For instance, DSD Plus will display the talk group and the unit ID number. Since dispatch on conventional systems is always radio ID 1, the rest of the radios are officers. I can see who is talking and when, and along with my SDR direction finder, I can see what direction they are transmitting from. This is called traffic analysis. Radio waves must still emulate from the transmitter, so therefore they can be tracked, encrypted or not. To direction find the encrypted PD units, I listen to the talk frequency of the repeater. Since dispatch doesn't transmit to the tower, they are the tower, I don't have to worry that I am tracking dispatch. Or I could track them with my Baofeng radio and a homemade Yagi. Since there is still waves being generated, analog or digital, encrypted or not, they can be tracked. The only solution is to change how they operate their radios, which will not happen in the public safety space anytime soon. The military has adopted this way, though, or a new way of transmitting on the radio spectrum, and that is called spread spectrum bursts which means they are transmitting on a rolling frequency list, hopping through the radio spectrum, and in addition, they are sending small data bursts instead of long voice messages, which make it extremely hard for the transmitting units to be found. Research has been done at some of the big civil disturbances involving how the peaceful protesters communicate, and what was found was the following. Many people involved use their real names while transmitting over the radio, and they commonly use the frequency space set aside for the following Family Radio Service, FRS General Mobile Radio Service, GMRS Multi-Use Radio Service, MERS Citizens Band, CB Maritime Frequencies or the default frequencies programmed in their radios like Baofengs to test frequency or spectrum emissions. To find where they are transmitting from, I would use a directional antenna or Yagi to pinpoint the direction of the transmitting stations. Or, better yet, I would monitor the frequencies to hear what is going on. 911 public safety answering points, more commonly referred to as dispatch centers, don't listen in on those frequencies as they are not programmed in their scanners because it's not meant for them to conduct their business on or for anybody else for them to service conduct their business on. Those frequencies should always be scanned in the background in addition to using a scanner, a radio, or an SDR to watch for traffic. 
especially since most people don't know how to program a radio and instead just turn it on and select a channel. Or they could be using their smartphones on an app called Zello. Zello is a basic two-way radio app that transmits voice and or text messaging over the internet. There are a few people who programmed ham repeaters into their two-way radios at these events and were using them for their nefarious activities. You should always monitor your local ham repeaters too in an instance like that where any information might be critical for you to know. To find frequencies you might want to listen to, there are a few ways you can go about finding them. RadioReference.com is a great source for public safety and commercial frequencies and is being constantly updated. I found it to be an almost complete listing. If what you're looking for is not there, it might be found on a regional website like the one for New England, scan-ne.net. This is a regional listing and there are other websites like it for other reason, regions around the United States and the world. For amateur radio repeaters, repeaterbook.com is an almost complete listing. All of these sites also have amateur radio repeaters which have been submitted. Or you can scour the waves yourself and find new frequencies that people are talking on. If you know what you want to listen to, you can also call it up on the FCC ULS database and sort by either name or call sign. Then take down the frequencies listed for fixed stations and listen for activity on those frequencies. I was able to find a few hidden repeaters in my backyard by looking them up on the FCC ULS database. When I monitor my town and the surrounding towns to gather information, I break it down by concentric circles. In the middle one is my local town PD, FD, EMS, and Public Works. Each department has its own dedicated receiver except for Public Works and EMS. I only monitor Public Works when there is a big storm to see how the town is affected and if it's safe to go out. The PD SDR receiver using DSD Plus shows me who is talking, when, and what direction they are in because they are mostly encrypted. The FD is all analog, so hearing them is not a problem. When it comes to local EMS, I leave it on scan because of the lack of traffic on the frequency. They dispatch over LTE capable tablets. I then have the surrounding town's fire departments on scan. This is because you don't need a lot of narrative to know what is going on. The only surrounding town PD that is unencrypted has its own dedicated receiver. This is for a few reasons, but the big one is that they notify their officers about all bolos that go out, whether it be over the hotline or the collect system. Also, it seems a lot of people who flee that town come towards my town. Lastly, I also have the state police from my local area highways on their own dedicated receiver, since my town is bordered on three sides by highway. Then, on the next outer circle, I have a dedicated receiver which monitors the county-wide channels. This would be the PD hotline, the FD intercity, the MedNet for medical or hospital updates, and our local medical helicopter, LifeStar. Since the PD hotline is the only one that is VHF low band, reception is dependent on if you are in range or at a proper altitude. No repeater is being used for this. I monitor it off the town in the middle of the county's trunked system. This is because they have the best reception and it's on its own talk group, which makes it easy to listen to. By monitoring those frequencies, I am able to know what is going on around me at all times, and since my listening station is very modular, I can listen to the railroad in case of a derailment or monitor U.S. military worldwide HF frequency channels and conduct traffic analysis. Or I could adapt my listening post to help assist with a local town event. I've set up my listening station to get the most information I can in real time for the benefit of my family and myself. Another way you can get information in real time about events outside of your local or state level is Broadcastify's alerts. If you have the app on your phone, it will alert you to huge or important events and you can listen to them if you want. These might be things outside of your normal scanning zone or outside the state you might be interested in. If you've enjoyed this presentation, Feel free to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you.